I've just shorted Solana, which is betting on the price going down, making money as the market goes down. How is it going to unfold? Well, I don't know. But today I'm going to tell you the exact reasons why I'm shorting Solana and why I'm bearish on Solana over the next few weeks. So if you like today's content, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Let's dive straight into Solana. First, I'm going to focus on the weekly chart, right? I love double time frame momentum. In other words, the trend is your friend. Ride it until its end, until it reaches its bend. And the last time the blue line went below the red, sideways to down. Big movement to the downside. Well, we've just had that again over here. So basically, that just tells us the higher degree trend, we should only be looking for short trade setups. So now I'm going to go into the daily chart, where there's a few particular things that I want to really address with Solana. Really, really important and powerful information. But before I do, I want to read a quote from my book. It's the Extraordinary New Venture Capital Opportunity, How to Invest Like a Pro. You can actually now download a free copy. It's in the description link below. But what I want to do, I want to read this. It's a Bruce Lee quote, right? It's from chapter six. Because what most people don't realize, on technical analysis, some of the stuff that we're going to cover today, is only part of the equation of being a successful professional trader. Another part is actually the mindset, how you think, your belief systems, and your trade management. And I hear people talking sometimes and commenting sometimes, and the words are loose and people are not paying attention to their words because words are like magic and you have to be impeccable with your word. So Bruce Lee says this, a wise man can learn more from a foolish question than a fool can learn from a wise answer. So when I'm hearing questions or comments, I can tell the level of the individual. And what I would like to get across today when we're looking at Solana is the concept, the thinking of thinking like a casino and how to become the casino because ultimately the casino always wins. The house always wins because it has the edge in its favor. So when we jump back into Solana, the daily chart, how can we get a very strong edge in our favor? Now, it doesn't mean we're guaranteed to be right because we're shorting it right now. But what we do know is Solana's trend has been down, right? That's clear to see. If you zoom out, since November last year, it's been pretty much down. It's been pretty much bang on point with that. Since, what's this day here? June, pretty much in a correction, right? Overlapping waves. This is a signal of a corrective nature telling us that the, the buying pressure is weak and the selling pressure is strong. So eventually, the, what's likely to occur is the continuation of the former trend, which is down. And the weekly momentum supports that as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into this, right? I'm going to zoom in. What we want to pay special attention to is two factors here. Actually, three. Actually, actually four. We'll go for four, right? I'll tell you the I'll tell you the full deal, the the full story. So, firstly, what do you see with the momentum, right? So, there's thousands of momentum indicators, thousands, literally thousands. My favorite by far is the Stochastics RSI. And if you would love to get all my chart settings, like all the analysis that you see on the chart, this four display that we use weekly is in the top left. Then we have our daily four hour and one hour. You can actually get my charts for free now. I also put that in the description link below. Solana is one of them. Uh, you get options of a few others as well. And you can just either just view them. So it's my live analysis. So whatever we finish on today, you'll see everything. And as I update it, yours will get updated also. You can also copy these settings into your own trading view. But what do you see with the weekly momentum? Well, there's a couple of clues, right? We're looking for clues. We want to get our Sherlock Holmes hat on. This momentum indicator is pretty accurate, pretty accurate, and it gives us very valuable information. What does it give us? Well, let's just look at the last time, the last two times, the blue line went below the red. What happened? We had a local high. Blue line went below the red. We had a local high. And both times, the price went down. Okay, it ended up being more of a corrective, as in not that much, but it went down. So what do we have now? Well, this is called the momentum being overbought that tells us that they were probably close to having a daily high. So we want to be very, very aware of that. Very, very, very aware of that. All right, what other information do we have? Well, there's some very valuable information because momentum by itself is good, but not strong enough. Now we're going to look at pattern price and time to really stack the odds in our favor. And I want to give a bit of detail here because there's always a method to the madness. So you see a few horizontal and vertical lines. 
Well, what we're looking at here is the market has moved down, pretty impulsive, then it's had an overlapping wave structure to the way up, and most corrections, the typical maximum, more often than not in all markets, especially crypto, is a number called 78.6. 78.6%, which is a Fibonacci ratio, and we've tagged that the other day. That's very, very relevant and significant. What I've also got is these vertical lines. Like, what the heck are these vertical lines that you get? These two, right? You see these two lines? These are Fibonacci time. And more often than not, it's like magic. It's like being the oracle, being able to see the future, like you got a crystal ball, even though we, we don't. But it's like, it's almost like the be next best thing is often the market will reverse on key dates. And one of the key dates is the 11th of August, which we can see in advance. But you go, what's that based on? What is it based on? What logic is it based on? Actually, you're going to love this. Check this out, right? Check this out. Markets tend to move in rhythms and cycles. And if we look at this, there's a high over here, there's a high over here, there's a high over here. Well, what if the rhythm continued, this high to high, how long did that take? How many days did that take? This high to this high, how many days did that take? Right, well, what if the rhythm continues, so then we can project that forward in time, and that's what one of these vertical lines is. Another key ratio is something called a low to low to high. Basically what that is, and it's really reliable, really reliable, and it's the typical maximum for the next high. It's called a low to low to high, right? A low to low to high. We literally measure how many days did it take for this low to this low to occur, and then we project it forward. That's what t these two vertical lines are. They're very significant. They're not just random vertical lines, very significant, very precise. So now we've got double time frame momentum. Weekly is bearish, daily is overbought. We've got this overlapping wave structure. We've got a 78.6% price retracement. We've got two key time ratios. So that's telling us there's a high probability that we're going to see Solana continue to a downward trend, at least exceeding this. But potentially, because of the weekly momentum, potentially, this is where you become the casino because you can afford to be wrong like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% of the time because when we're right, What's likely to occur with Solana, a minimum of this is likely, but potentially exceeding the former low and a continuation to break this low and go to a continuation of the former trend. That's what we're looking at over here. So we go, how do we enter this? How do we make money from this? Like literally, like what do we do with this? What's a logical way? Well, there's a couple of ways. So what I've done, how I've shorted this is I've dropped down to a lower degree time frame. I like to enter where possible on a 60 minute chart as in a one hour chart because one, you can get a tighter entry. So I'm going to go into the bottom right-hand corner. Remember, you can get access to this very chart. You get all the details. So we've been triggered into the trade in the last hour. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly, exactly how we've gone short. How is it going to play out? I can't tell you. We, but I can tell you the maximum we can lose. I can tell you why we're going short. Only over the coming days will we see how it actually plays out. Do we finish with a profit over the coming days and weeks? Do we take a small loss? Do we break even? So we will keep you updated with this. So what we have with Solana now on the hourly chart is we've had this impulsive movement to the upside. You know, it looks like a one, two, three, four, five, right? And markets tend to move in fives and threes, five and threes. So when I see a five-way structure, often that can be a finish of a correction. So if I just zoom out, I'm just going to show you this. We won't make it too complicated. But what I said the other day is Solana is doing this overlapping correction. Now, we don't need to get too analytical and too anal about this, you know, the wave count, but most corrections finish in a five-wave sequence. Knowing that information, when we see that, this is a highly probable that this may be an end of a correction, and then we get a continuation to the downside. So how we entered this was, I noticed there was a, it's called a, what is it called? It's called a overbalance of price, right? An overbalance of price. What I saw was Solana has recently done a nice move down, pretty impulsive. To the untrained eye, you know, there's no big deal here. But there's two major things that you want to pay attention to with this initial move down. The first one is this move down is bigger than any former move to the downside in this red sequence, which is the most recent count. It's called an overbalance of price. The second thing is, we've exceeded this pivot low, this swing low over here, right? So there's two factors that are telling us 
that we may have got a trend reversal so we can consider short trade setups. So how do we take a short trade setup on this? Going into the detail, today's a detailed one, right? Wait for the next bearish reversal so we can see the momentum, the blue line's gone below the red. That makes the odds further in our favor. I've then also done some analysis over here. I'm, I'm going into real detail today. Um, but this is what you, this is how we trade. This is, this is you want the odds in our favor. So what we've done is, I won't go into too much detail, but we've got a move down and then it's retraced up to this 50% line. This is the typical minimum of a correction. It's done an 8BC, is a three wave correction. There's some Fibonacci ratios, time ratios. This is the minimum time it takes for a correction to occur. And we've got some wave A's and wave C's often equal each other. So basically this is, uh, tells us this is likely to be a high probability top. So then we go, okay, our conditions are now in play to take a short trade. And then you just want to have your entry strategy. So the entry strategy that we've used here is something called an overlap, a wave overlap. In other words, when the market, if I just draw it like this, maybe a bit easier to see on closing data. You see this blue line over here? Actually, it might be confusing. Let me, um, let me just zoom in like this. In fact, it might be easier if I zoom out. What I want, what I want to show you is, in fact, let me just, I just want to make it a bit clearer. Let me show it to you like this so you can just see these a bit clearer. When you see a clear A, B, C structure, what is the first signal to confirm that wave C is likely to hold? It's something called an overlap. Basically, on the closing line of this, this is, this is the close, if the price overlaps, which is basically what I've drawn as this green line, that makes it a strong signal that this is likely to hold. So that's where we put a short order in, put an order in. What should the market not do if this is going to continue to the downside? Well, it shouldn't take this high out. So we've got a stop loss on this high. So this is our capital exposure. That's the maximum we can risk. And uh, with this, uh, you normally risk 2%, 2, 1, 2 or 3%. Because it's uh, on an hourly time frame and the daily momentum is bullish, I've actually only risked 1% on this. So it's a very, very tight entry. Now I'm going to also show you trade management. I'm going to finish with trade management because there's a lot of elements to trade in. You know, there's the technical analysis, there's your mindset, there's your trade plan, there's your business plan, there's your entry strategy. There's your stop loss adjustment strategy, which is basically your exit and profit taking strategy. So there's a, a lot of elements. Before I do, how would you like to be able to see this ahead of time? Because, you know, this is YouTube content. The problem is, you know, I'm, I'm filming this in the morning. By the time you're seeing this now, the entries already occurred. But I actually have something where I actually do videos for my private community before it occurs. It's called the R15 Crypto Gym. And what it looks like is... This, I filmed this this morning. It's a two, three, four minute video. It's the R15 Crypto Gym where I do daily workouts. I do have Solana, BNB, and Bitcoin. And I cover what we've covered today, but really going into the detail of the entry point, what we're talking about today. So this is this morning. And I'm just talking about the entry, um, why I've put my order in, how I put my order in. So the people that are members of the R15 Crypto Gym can take advantage of this information and you can use it and manage your trade, et cetera, et cetera. And then I do this literally every single morning. So if you'd like to check out the R15 Crypto Gym, you can actually join for one pound and try it out for 30 days. You get a lot of goodies. A lot of goodies will look like this. This is the R15 Crypto Gym. You'll get a boot camp. You get an invite to my private Telegram. Um, you'll get just, just a lot of goodies, a lot of goodies. But basically, the basics is, is this over here. Uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see this like this. Welcome to the R15 Crypto Gym. Uh, a lot of goodies. I think you'll absolutely love it. If you want to join, test it out for one pound, 30 days. And we do literally every single day, timely information on Solana. So now what I'm going to talk about is how to think. Most people are terrible at thinking. And trading is not an easy game. It's simple, but not easy. Why is it not easy? Because of the way people think or don't think. What you want to be doing is thinking like a casino. Right now, me just being transparent, I don't know what's going to happen next. And there is no way of me knowing what's going to happen next. If you was a billion dollar individual and you had billions of dollars and you bought 100 million of Solana, that will push the price up. So one individual can move the price, right? And we, we should know that and be aware of that. But when we see these patterns, 
is basically stacking the odds of what's likely to occur next. Just think of it as a blackjack player at the casino who's able to count the cards and they stack the odds in their favor. And that's why they ultimately win. Why does the casino always win? Is because every game is designed where the casino has a higher edge, a higher probability of winning. So now we have a higher edge of winning. We've got double time frame momentum. We've got pattern. We've got price. We've got a very specific entry strategy. We've got time analysis. So we've got key factors. But then what are the trade expectations? I'm just going to zoom out for this. So we're in this trade already. It's been triggered. So how I do this is I actually have, this is a bit of a paradox. And, and traders sometimes, amateurs and beginners find this difficult because they don't know how to think. They haven't been taught how to think. And the market, you, you're free to do what you want. There's no accountability in terms of other than yourself and you're free. So you need discipline, you need rules, you need a business plan. So the paradox is this. It's actually best practice to assume that the market is not going to unfold as you want it to. So I want Solana to tank, not because I've got anything against the project, because I'm shorting it because of this pattern, right? I make more profits if it tanks, right? But we're going to use two types of thinking. I call it unit one and unit two thinking. Insurance style thinking, capital preservation, and then profit style thinking. If the trend is to unfold, having a positive expectation of the trade so we can really, really ride the trend and get the most out of this trade. But first is about insurance and capital preservation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, Jigir, if we are wrong and Solana doesn't really unfold to the downside, what is the minimum it should do more often than not? And can we become risk-free and lock in some profits at that point? Right, that's what we're going to talk about. So how we do that is we focus on what's immediately happening right now in front of us. So what we can see is Solana's done a five-wave move. I've drawn it in red. This five-wave move on an hourly chart. Well, if we focus on that and say, okay, well, most corrections occur in a three-wave structure. A, a move down, a corrective move up, and then another move down. So more often than not, Solana and all cryptos and all projects and all markets should do a minimum of at least something like this. And that's what this green box represents. I actually measured this in advance. I can get rid of these lines now. These lines have served us and this has served us. We no longer need that. If I can just get rid of this and just pop that back in. We go, okay, what are the minimum expectations? Well, most corrections, and I'm going into a lot of detail here, but you know, this is what we cover in the crypto gym. This is what I cover in my training because there's method to the madness. It looks like magic. You know, Arthur C. Clarke said it best. He said, any, any significantly advanced technology or science is indistinguishable from magic. And sometimes this analysis looks like magic because often you'll find these points are just hit like almost to, to the tick, to the, to the penny. And then boom, it just reverses. So what is the minimum typical correction in terms of price? Uh, it's 50% is the typical minimum. 62% is really, really common. And the typical maximum is 67%. But we've also got, I'm just going to do this quite fast, actually, because otherwise this video will become way too long, right? I want to get it more punchy. All right, we've got these key ratios here. Key ratios, there's a few other ratios. Basically, there's this green box in terms of price. How long does a correction normally take? Well, it's typically 38 to 62%. And 100% of the move to the downside. So in other words, this top to this low, projected from this top, and we have 100% of that. I know I'm doing that fast. I have courses for this, by the way. In the crypto gym, you can purchase my courses if you want the advanced training. But you'll see how I got this green box. It represents this, right? So these vertical and horizontal lines. So let me just get rid of, let me just clean this up a little bit. And this mark here has already been exceeded. I'm just going to clean that up like so. We can make it even cleaner like this. We'll leave, we'll leave it like this. Right, so what we're going to do is if Solana unfolds as a minimum and hits between $41 and $40, I'm looking to take some profits. I'm looking to take profits and move my stop loss to break even, right? So that's my minimum expectation if we're wrong. So what that means is 
this is the paradox. And traders find this very difficult because no one wants to be wrong. They take it so personally. And it's a very amateur way of thinking. You're going to get stopped at a point. You know, the best basketball players in the world, when they're playing competitive games, when they're shooting three-pointers, 40% is regarded as world-class. That means 60% of three-pointers are missed, and that's, that's considered world-class. Trading is the same. You only need to be right 20, 30, 40% of the time, because when you're right, you make a lot of money. When you're wrong, you make a small profit, break even, or take a small loss. So if the market does something along the lines of this, we can still make a good profit, decent profit. Nothing to write home about, but if it does this. So that's unit one thinking, insurance thinking. So what's unit two thinking, profit thinking, having a positive expectation for the outcome of the market. So we're going to need to zoom out for this. And I'm going to just do it like this. I'm going to do it like this, just so you can see it. Because this is what people fail to see. They get too caught up in the immediate action. So we want to become risk-free, ideally within 24 hours. We'll see how it unfolds. Not guaranteed, but that's just the name of the game. There's always some risk, but we can manage that risk. But the positive expectation, the paradox is we anticipate something like this to occur. This is why we're shorting the market. This, and we want to ride this trend if it unfolds. 30, 40, sometimes 50% of the time, it will unfold like this. And this is where we make our big money. But we want to protect our capital initially and then let the market unfold. And there, my friends, is how you trade like a pro. You get your high probability edge, so you're the casino. I use momentum pattern price and time, Fibonacci price, Fibonacci time, Elliott wave pattern, and double momentum using stochastics RSI. By the way, if you want these charts exactly as is, you know, I might tweak them as time goes on, but you can get them in the description link below. It will look like this. Just uh, you'll get instant access and you can use these charts. Then what we do is we manage our trade in a professional, business-like manner. We don't get personal about it. People get so caught up. Sometimes this is this is the most amateur mistake people make. And it, it's a bit annoying, but you know, there's a book I got. Um, I'm just gonna grab it. Hold on. Oh, I got it over here. I got it over here. It's called Trading in the Zone. It's a fantastic book on mindset. And what he talks about is the gentleman's name is Mark Douglas. He, is it Mark Douglas? Yeah, Mark Douglas. He says what we want to do is not be judging your trades on the outcome. So obviously, we're trading to make money, right? Short in the market, long in the market. Well, that's obvious. But the trade should be judged at the quality of the decision-making at the time of placing the trade. So right now, the information right now that we have right now, I don't know what's gonna, what it's going to look like tomorrow, but right now, like as of this morning, this is the information. How is it going to unfold? I have no idea. You can't know. I can't know. There is no way of knowing. But there is a high probability that it's going to unfold in our favor, right? Very, very important. So we have to judge the trade based on the now moment independent of the outcome because you can have a very high probability of a certain thing happening and it doesn't happen. The worst thing you can do is break all your rules, do a low probability trade and then it goes your way and you judge it on the outcome. Why? Because you just got bad learnings and therefore you're going to do low probability trades, over expose yourself with risk and ultimately you're going to lose and that's not what the casino does. The casino loses money on days but it ultimately has the edge and it understands statistically with volume, it is ultimately going to win. So now we just manage the trade. So we know we can get a stop out for our full position. That's just, that's, that's unavoidable. And if you can't accept that, you shouldn't be trading. And I know people cannot accept that. I found and I've seen it. It's, a, it's hard to get your head around. That's why I recommend reading that book. You know, after reading my book, download my book for free. But at this point, you can purchase Mark Douglas, Trading in the Zone. It's a great book for mindset because that's why most people tend to lose in the game of trading. All right, I think I've, I'm, I'm, we'll, see, we'll see how Solana unfolds. If you want to check this out daily, join the R15 Crypto Gym. I do daily workouts every single morning on Solana before we enter the trades. And then however it unfolds, just transparently, we just kind of report it. And if it, if it's a great profit, right, we log it in. 
if it's a loss, we take that loss as the cost of doing business and we're one step closer to the next big trend that is likely to unfold where we're going to make great profits. So if you like today's video, today was detailed, right? Detailed, just very, very transparent. Entry to exit, trade management, high probability and everything else. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Let's loop that quote. You want to be impeccable with your word. Words are not just words. Words are like magic and they can influence your unconscious and you are always listening. <laughs> That's important to know. Where other people might be listening, but you are always listening. And if you can take control of this, you know, it's almost referred to as a life-forming process, you can influence your unconscious, which will impact your trading results. So this one's from Bruce Lee. A wise man can learn more from a foolish question than a fool can learn from a wise answer. So, you know, the questions and your words not only tell you your level, you know, or at least tell other people anyway, but you can take control over your words and just be mindful of how you're thinking and thinking the correct way. And that just takes learning, training, you know, coming to the crypto gym, reading books and everything else. With consistency, you'll get better and better and better. So join me tomorrow morning for the Solana workout. We'll see how it plays out. You get 30-day trial in the R15 crypto gym, one pound. I think you'll love it. But if you don't love it, then you don't have to stay after 30 days. But just check it out. I think you'll find it really, really useful. All right. See you soon.